Another life-threatening situation arose one night. These were always unexpected developments. When a call came from uh, Anyan village to the Vietnamese headquarters saying a U.S. Army truck, a large truck, had been involved in a motor vehicle accident and uh, people that were injured and, um, and help was needed. Our Vietnamese counterparts uh, informed uh, us, informed me of this incident. We immediately called to uh, Vinh Long, to the Army airfield, where the truck had come from and was returning to. And the response we got was that uh, no U.S. units from there would be able to go down this very uh, insecure road into our district at night without having a um, major U.S. operation to do so. This would take uh, hours to uh, put together. It seemed like life, uh, lives hung in the balance. And so I grabbed a couple of the team members uh, from my own team. We got a Jeep and we drove out the gate and we headed down this dark, insecure road, uh, hoping that we would be surprising any Viet Cong that maybe were along the road um, and that we would get to the accident and we'd go from there. We're thinking there are Americans uh, badly hurt there and you never left Americans who were injured, whose lives were at risk alone. You always went to help them. That was, that was the rule that we all lived by and I was fulfilling. Well, we got to uh, the village after probably 10 or 15 minutes of going down this, this dark road. We got there, we found that the accident had involved a large uh, American uh, army truck, but thankfully uh, none of the US Army personnel who had been driving it were injured, they were okay. I left one of my men there with them with a radio so we'd be able to uh, protect them there in the village till the morning when help could come and the truck could be moved. But they had collided with a very um, small uh, car driven by uh, Vietnamese civilians who were critically injured. And so we uh, called for a helicopter, for the medevac, the dust off uh, helicopter to come. It landed. We put the injured uh, Vietnamese civilians on it. It flew off to the hospital. We then drove back to our compound because as the uh, senior officer, I needed to be there in case anything else happened. Of course, it's more dangerous trip back, but uh, now that the Viet Cong had seen us go down the road, but it turned out okay. I didn't think about it again. Uh, for about a week later, uh, one afternoon, this uh, Vietnamese man asked to be able to come into our compound. He came up to me and in an incredibly uh, un-Vietnamese-like fashion, um, put his arms around me and squeezed me and thanked me and said, you saved my life. Because in, he was so badly hurt that he had been at the hospital, but he had recovered, he was alive, he was on his way back home, and he came, and he, but he wanted to stop and thank me for what we had done. We had saved his life, probably the life of the passenger who was, who was with him, who was also injured. But uh, in doing this, uh, it made a deep impression on him. And as a helping a fellow human being was its own reward that he was alive and to receive his thanks and his uh, hugging me. It's always one of my lasting memories from my career.